Hello everybody, it's Vertical Sandwich. Welcome back to Book Reviews. So, this is a heavy one. This is, I mean, look at it, it's huge, it's enormous. This is, this is, this book is, uh, almost 900 pages. So, this is Frank Herbert's Dune. And I say it that way because, uh, well, it's, seriously, it's sci science fiction supreme masterpiece. I believe this might have been the first book to get a sci-fi masterworks collection. Um, it may be the inaugural book for that. Uh, so this was the Hugo Award winner from 1966. And here's the thing, is before we even start talking about this book, so we've talked about kind of some other books from the era, and it, my reviews of them have not been great. And, and the reasoning is, and the reason is because Dune it really comes down to it, is when you realize that Dune tied with this immortal, and you read this immortal, and you read Dune, and you just go, how did this tie? How is this a tie? Because Dune is a landmark in science fiction. It's like, and, and I'm going to say, I'm going to say, it has aged. Let's just say that. I'm not going to say it hasn't aged well, because it, it has. Dune is timeless. But, um, you, when you read it, you go, oh, it's a good story, but like I've, I've read other stuff like this but that's because it exists Dune is the template for books that make up an entire reality and then give you characters there is nothing there is no fundamental touchstone between the characters of Dune and our reality they live in a different they, they live in a different cosmos they they have, yeah, all they have is a similar biology, uh, but aside from that, they have different languages, they have different social structure, they have um, different religion, and none of those things are even remotely comparable to what we have here. And so Herbert had to create a universe, and he did, and it's magnificent. It's just magnificent. You just, like, I'm going to gush about this book because it's, it's, so here's the novel that will be forever considered a triumph of the imagination. Set on the desert planet Arrakis, Dune is the story of the boy Paul Atre Atreides? Atreides, let's just go with that, Atreides. Who would become the mysterious man known as Muad'Dib. He would avenge the traitorous plot against his noble family and would bring to fruition humankind's most ancient and unattainable dream. A stunning blender, blend of adventure and mysticism, environmentalism and politics, Dune won the first Nebula Award, shared the Hugo Award, and formed the basis of what is undoubtedly the greatest epic in science fiction. Yeah, it's like, like, Arthur C. Clarke said unique. I know nothing comparable to it except the Lord of the Rings. Yeah, this is the science fiction version of Lord of the Rings, where somebody went like, I need a, I, I need a language and a new set of everything for these characters. And so, and this, and it reads beautifully. That's the thing, is something like that can be very clunky, where you go, like, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't like, people are speaking languages I don't understand. Well, that's not quite the way it works, right? The, the language exists and is supplemented by the language we can't understand. And by doing that, we learn these things. And it's just, it's, it's a magnificent book. It's a magnificent book. It's, 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 it's 900, you have to read this. You just have to read it. It's just one of those things. It's like when I, when I review... Because at some point I'm going to have to review 1984. We're talking about science fiction books here. And I'm going to have to tell you, like, you have to read this. Like, it doesn't make any sense for you to read science fiction without reading this. So, like, you have to know that this exists and have experienced it to kind of understand. And, and like I said, it really puts things from the 60s in perspective. Because when you read stuff from the 70s, when you read stuff from the 60s, there's like a blend of, of like, this stuff is coming out. Like, this book is going to change science fiction. And when you read the science fiction that hasn't been touched by it, you go, oh, science fiction needed to change. <laughs> so let's read a little bit about the, or of this. So, Paul stood outside the still tent in the late afternoon. The crevasse where he'd pitched their camp lay in deep shadow. He stared out across the open sand at the distant cliff, wondering if he should waken his mother, who lay asleep in the tent. Folds upon folds of dunes spread beyond their shelter. Away from the setting sun, the dunes exposed greased shadows so black they were like bits of night, and the flatness. His mind searched for something tall in that landscape, but there was no persuading tallness out of heat-addled air and that horizon. No bloom or gentle shaken thing to mark the passage of a breeze. 
Only dunes and that distant cliff beneath a sky of burnished silver blue. What if there isn't one of the abandoned testing stations across there, he wondered. What if there are no freemen? Either, and the plants we see are only an accident. Within the tent, Jessica awakened, turned onto her back, and peered sidelong out the transparent end at Paul. He stood with his back to her, and something about his stance reminded her of his father. She sensed the well of grief rising within her and turned away. Presently, she adju adjusted her still suit, refreshed herself with water from the tent's catch pocket, and slipped out to stand and stretch the sleep from her muscles. Paul spoke without turning. I find myself enjoying the quiet here. How the ge mind gears itself for its environment, she thought, and she recalled a Ben Gesserit axiom. The mind can go either direction under stress, towards positive or towards negative, on or off. Think of it as a spectrum whose extremes are unconsciousness at the negative end and hyperconsciousness at the positive end. The way the mind will lean under stress is strongly influenced by training. It could be a good life here, Paul said. She tried to see the desert through his eyes, seeking to encompass all the rigors this planet accepted as commonplace, wondering at the possible futures Paul had glimpsed. One could be alone out here, she thought, without fear of someone behind you, without fear of the hunter. She stepped past Paul, lifted her binoculars, adjusted the oil lenses, and studied the escarpment across from them. Yes, Seguro in the Arroyas, and another spiny growth, and a matting of low grasses, yellow-green in the shadows. I'll strike camp, Paul said. So, like, if you can't love that, then I don't know what to tell you. I mean, it's just... And, and and this is one of the few novels where I'm going to tell you that the pacing is slow, and you should love it. That you should love that the pacing is slow, because it's deliberate. It's so, everything about it is so deliberate. It's such a heavy spiritual journey that the characters go on through this 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 book. And this, and this very strange and alien mysticism that kind of encompasses their entire lives. That is just it. That is just gorgeous, and the fact that it, these things kind of grow organically around the environment that is that is created, it all just makes so much sense. You read it and it just feels right. There's something about it, and like I said, there's no touchstone for you to go, oh, Freeman are like blah 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 blah. No, there's and, and this is the thing is that when when we're familiar with science fiction or fantasy creating worlds to which we have to become accustomed that are comfortable to us, there are only a few things that we can think of, uh, uh, like The Lord of the Rings or, uh, or Star Wars, uh, and, and this is like one of those things, right? It's one of those things where you just settled in and go like, sure, sure, sure. Paul can see the future, why not? Um... <laughs> And, and it's, it's, again, we've, we've talked about it, I've talked about it in some other reviews about the idea of overmen, and in a way Paul is kind of an overman, but it, he is not, he does not live a life without struggles, or a life where he is not in danger. And so what you're watching is a man through struggle and pain and deprivation and risk become kind of this legendary character and it's so worth it it's it's just so worth it and you end up at the end you end up with kind of such a strange setup of kind of people and mysticism in this um this world full of kind of people who are you know like he becomes a center point of a you know of, of a, a kind of religious prophecy and it kind of leaves off with this cliffhanger where you go, what is going to happen? And then you realize anything. That Frank Herbert has such an amazing imagination for science fiction that once you've created a world like this, that the answer to what's going to happen next is anything is possible. You never know what's going to come out of this, this setup that he's just engineered in a very magical and enjoyable way. You should dive into the world of Dune. There are several books in the Dune universe, but I've only read the first book. But it's unbelievable, and I actually had seen the David Lynch movie before. I and um, I know people who really love Dune really hated that movie, and I I can't suggest the movie. It's not that great of a movie, but 
certainly the book is a masterpiece. I mean, you can, you know, yeah, obviously you can you can say we're going to throw around that word a lot because we're dealing with Hugo Award winners, right? But there there are things that won Hugo Awards that are not Dune. There are a lot of things that won Hugo Awards that are not Dune. And this is one of those things where I think it's foundational. Like, having read it and realized the era that it comes out of, you just go, well, sci the, the sci-fi I read today can't exist without this existing in 1966. And, yeah, it's, it's one of the, it, the Chicago Tribune, one of the monuments of modern science fiction. Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's a huge deal. It's a gigantic deal in science fiction. This is a genre-creating novel. And I, like I said, I never, I, I never doubted it. I sat down and I read it and I went, there's nothing in here I have a problem with whatsoever. It all makes, like, it, it, it reads like a, like a wonderful kind of chronology of a fantasy civilization. It's, it's, and this is one of those things that really crosses the line, right? There's laser guns in here. So this is a sci-fi book. Sure. There's like a weird desert planet. Sure. But this is a fantasy novel. It's th this really toes the line in a very like it's just both. It's just both. It's just both. Dune is a beautiful epic science fiction fantasy. It could be that. It c it can. It can be that. It can. So uh, should you read Dune? Yeah, you got to read Dune. You have to read Dune. It's just a, it's a masterpiece. It's just it's like I said, it's foundational. I can't say it's genius. It's the kind of thing that you're just not going to see another thing like this. And that's, you know... I mean, you will. You'll see other things like this, but it's because of this. And it's amazing. It's amazing that this... It's amazing that this was considered alongside Zelazny's This Immortal. Because you read This Immortal, and you go, it's... You know, it's whatever. And you read this, and you go, but this is... This is the winner. This is the Hugo Award winner from 1966, without a doubt. Like, when I said this buries... This Immortal and an Unmarked Grave, it does. And it, and it buries a bunch of other stuff from that decade in just an unmarked grave. It just doesn't even look back. It just goes, yeah, I've got fantasy planet, desert planet, spice mining, mysticism of the dead, people who can see the future, riding sandworms kind of stuff. You know, I mean, jeez. Jeez, this book. Just uh, treat yourself to Dune. You will thank me. You will, yeah, like... You remember when you told me that I should read blah blah blah, like Dune. Read Dune. Just read Dune. Read Dune so you get it. Just, just so you just go, oh yeah, I get it. I get it. Dune. Dune. Legendary. Fantastic. So yeah, so read about Paul's journey and how he becomes Muad'Dib. And uh, yeah, this book is available everywhere. <laughs> you can walk in any bookstore has a copy of this. This is the standard in the genre. So this book is available everywhere. You, uh, you you don't have to buy my copy, although my copy has really big print that makes it seem like it goes really fast. If your copy has small print, this, this book is probably only 700 pages. But then it's got small print. See. So, yeah. Read Dune. Bye, everybody.